Welcome back to the Maria Sanchez Show. We are going to launch into Marketing 105, which is Scott Harris's ability to bring us along with the power of marketing via Mustang Media, Mustang Marketing. Mustang right? Marketing, thank you. And our next uh, guest is going to be speaking with us about a cemetery that's being desecrated by the general public and the city isn't doing anything about it. So, um, you, to, as a segue, Scott, you so, said... So, I'm bracketed by WikiLeaks <laughs> Swedish laws at a desecrated cemetery. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate the positioning here. <laughs> hey, news is news. Dude. Yes, apparently so. Can I be followed by the pet guy or something? Is there, <laughs> is there anything along those lines? Something light? Okay. Marketing 105. Yes. All right, well, I'm going to offer a couple of lifestyle tidbits. Don't move to Sweden. <laughs> okay, we're going to go with that to start in case you watched the previous segment. Um, but Marketing 105, it, it's, it's a simple message. Today. We're coming up toward the end of the year. You know, it's early December. And um, this is the time when a lot of people are starting to do the planning for 2011. Now, some people have done it earlier. A lot of people do budgets at the end of the third quarter, so budgets are there, but they're doing their planning. And, and what I would like to say to people, what I want them to think about and understand is, this year, more than any year in ever, maybe, it's a time to reevaluate what you've been doing with your marketing. Don't take anything that you've been doing for granted. If you're working with an agency, if you've got an outside agency, go to that agency and ask them to justify every single media expenditure, every single marketing expense that you're going through as a company. If you're going to a trade show, why? It's not good enough anymore that you went the last 10 years or everybody else goes. You need to take a look at that and make sure that it makes sense, that you're getting a return on your investment. If you're advertising in a newspaper or magazine or radio, anything other than this station, you want to reevaluate <laughs> completely. If you're here, you've done the right thing. Outside of that, you want to reevaluate and you want to take a look and say, are we getting the return we need? Are we reaching the audience that we want to talk to? Is this the right vehicle for delivering our message? And go through and do that with a critical eye. And most companies, and we work with a ton of them, will find that there are things that they have done in the past that worked in the past. They were the right decisions in the past. No longer are. And it's a tremendous way of finding some additional dollars that you can invest in something new and something different. Because there's more available to us now, this station, in all seriousness, being an example, there is more available to us now, more options, more opportunities, more different avenues and venues uh, for marketing people than there have ever been, ever, ever, ever in history. This is the most. So you need to look at all those. And you can't say silly things like, well, I don't use Facebook, so we're not going to market in Facebook. I don't care. You know, I don't get daily newspapers anymore, so we're not going to advertise in daily newspapers. It doesn't matter. What you need to look at is where are your customers and your potential customers? Where are your clients and potential clients? What are they listening to? What are they reading? How are they getting their information? And that's what you want to do. And so this is the time you kind of go back to zero-based budgeting. Take a look at every single thing that you're doing. And again, every trade show, every speaking engagement, every direct mail piece, every ad, every brochure, every single thing, your website, take a look at it. If you've got a website that's five, six, seven years old, it's probably not up to snuff. It's not enough just to say, I have a website. That doesn't work. You've got to take a look and make sure that website's working in today's marketplace, that it's effective for the people that are coming there now. And so, as you do that, as you evaluate your expenditures for 2010, taking a look now at your investments in 2011, where are you going to go? What makes sense for you as an organization? And if you evaluate every investment that you make and you prioritize those investments, then you're going to have a far better chance of being successful next year than you did this year. And all indicators are the economy is going to be picking up, which is a great opportunity for most of us. So if you can get out there and get in front of your competitors, because a lot of people are still holding on to the purse strings, cutting back on travel, cutting back on charitable giving, cutting back on marketing. They haven't quite released that yet. They're a little, little tense about doing that. You get a heads up on some of your competitors and get out there, and you're now ahead of the curve. The market's picking up. People are starting to think about it, spending money again, and you let them know that you're available and that you have a product or service that they might want to buy. When they do go to release those dollars, the odds are much better they're going to come to you. So it's a chance to invest your money far more wisely than you have in the past. And if you're a little more aggressive, it's a chance to jump ahead some of your competitors who might still be a little nervous, a little gun-shy about getting on there and taking on the market. 
How do you judge whether or not what you've done has been effective? Is there a percentage point or a cost? Well, there's there's a return? number of ways to take a look at it. I mean, in the old days, you had what were called bingo cards. Like if you advertise in a magazine, you literally, every ad in there had a number, and you would go through and circle the numbers on the ads you were interested in, mail this into the magazine. They would then mail it to each of the companies, and they would respond. You'd say, oh, I got 18 bingo responses. That's how it was done when I was a kid selling advertising. Now what you want to do, I mean, there are a lot of ways, but you can judge incoming phone calls. You can judge traffic coming into your store. You know, one of the great ways to get information, and it seems to surprise a lot of people, is ask. If you have a retail outlet and somebody comes into the store and it's the first time they've been there, ask them why they're there. Did they see your ad? Did they see your sign? Were they referred by a friend? Did they catch you on KDY TV? I mean, what, what's happening? And so if you start to hear the same answer two, three, four, five times, you're going to go, you know what? I think that ad in the paper is working. I think that ad on the Maria Sanchez show is effective. And if you never hear about something, if no one ever, ever mentions it, then you might want to take another look at it. And, you, and if you can, if you're sophisticated enough, you can follow conversion to sales as well. You might have magazine A, for example, that generates 50 leads and magazine B that generates 20. But if magazine B generates five sales and magazine A generates two, it's possible the quantity's good here, but the quality is better over here. So you have to start tracking that. You have to start doing the best you can to track every lead and every sale. And if you're a big enough company, you can do maybe some brand awareness benchmark studies. You know, go out and say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a study, a, a survey of the people in the community and find out how many people know about the Sanchez clothing outlet. And if 8% of them know about it today, and we do an extensive marketing campaign, and six months later that number jumps to 20%, then there's a pretty good idea that, that, that the campaign is working. You've got two and a half times as many people are now aware of your store. So the big thing you have to do is start keeping track of all the numbers that are available to you. And you can do simple things like different 800 numbers for different ads. If you're advertising maybe in a series of magazines, you can have a different 800 number for each magazine. Um, or each billboard or each well, television say promo spot. Code. Exactly. I mean, there's a, there's a number of those ways to do that. And so every bit of information you get helps you make decisions. It's not necessarily definitive. It's not black and white. There's not necessarily a matrix you can buy and say, okay, we got 3.7 here, so that's good. Let's double it. Um, you know, that's not necessarily the thing that's going to happen. But if you pull more information in, you do have a much better chance of making logical decisions. And so if you follow that and take another look at it going into 2011, and even if you just start today, even if you say, okay, we haven't done any of that in the past. We maybe should have. We didn't. Who cares? Let's start now. In 2011, start keeping track. Find out from your salesman. And that's another great way, by the way. Just ask your salespeople. What do you think is working? When you're sitting in the office, do they always say, hey, I saw your ad in Sanchez Monthly, or I saw you on the ESPN last night, or... You know, I got your direct mail piece, or it was great to meet you at the trade show. If you hear that over and over, it's probably a pretty good sign. Mm -hmm. So keep track of that. Ask your sales guy what they're hearing. If you've got customer service people with incoming phone calls, ask, have them ask them. Say, by the way, I'm so glad you're interested in our new jacket. How did you find out about it? Oh, I saw your press release in Cosmo, or I saw your billboard, or, you know, I was just walking through J.C. Penney's, and there it was. I mean, and, and keep track of that information, and eventually that very hazy picture will start to clear up for you. You'll start to hear the same voices and numbers coming through more often than not, and you say, you know what? It turns out that these trade shows are critical to our future. So we're going to shift some money and do more investment in trade shows. We're going to continue to follow it. That's the danger. People get used to doing something, and they think because it worked this year, it's going to work forever. Not necessarily the case. So you want to take a look at it. So the bottom line is, coming up to the end of the year, Go back and do a serious evaluation with no assumptions on your investment that you made in 2010 and use that information and probably some of it will be new and surprising to you as you prepare your plans or alter them if they've already been prepared for 2011 and beyond. And that's our year-end hint. That's Scott Harris with Marketing 105 with Mustang Marketing in the Conejo Valley, Thousand Oaks specifically. And we thank you so much for your time. We will take a quick break and we'll be right back.